God bless you, everybody. Welcome to Worship and the Word on tonight. I'm glad you joined us. Listen, I want you to do me a favor, and I want you to begin to invite somebody to Bible study. If you haven't already, invite somebody. Share this to your page. Um, I, we were... We, we, we missed a lot of you on last week, and when we tuned in, there was uh, less than 10 of you uh, on, on last week, and we don't want to do that. We want to stay connected to the Word of God. Uh, we want to stay connected to each other. So what you, invite your brother and sister, your fellow lifer, get them, text them, do whatever you have to do. Remind them that Bible study is on, and let's come together, and let's get into the Word of God on tonight. God bless you. Come on, put your hands together one more time, and give God a good praise right where you are. God is good to us all the time, and all the time God is good. We talked to you last week about faith uh, that triumphs, faith that triumphs, that overcomes, that has victory. And I want to stay in that same vein of faith on this week uh, because I've had a lot of conversations with different ones, whether they were members of Life Center or whether they were uh, just people that I come across. And this whole last year has been difficult for so many people. So many people's faith, so many people's mindset, so many people's attitudes, so many people's dispositions. It has been so difficult for so many that I want to do something. I want to talk about faith in crisis faith in crisis, the crisis of belief. Come on, grab your Bibles, grab your Bibles and go with me to Mark chapter number nine. Mark chapter number nine. And while you're doing that, while you're doing that, come on, let's make our declaration on today. You know what it is. I am not moved by what I see. I am not moved by what I hear. But I'm moved by what I believe. And I believe the word of God. The victory is mine. I have it now. And I can see it through my eyes of faith. Come on, come on. You believe that on today? Come on, let's pray. Father, we bless you for this moment in your word. I pray for my brother or my sister that may be struggling in their faith, that may be struggling in their mindset, that may be struggling in their fortitude, Lord God, towards the things that they are facing in life. I pray that you would strengthen them. Let the word that you have given me and placed on my spirit and my heart be what they need, Lord God, to uplift them where they are. I pray that you would not just speak to us individually, but speak to us collectively as a body, that we, Lord God, as, as lifers, as members of Life Center, will continue to stay strong in our faith, stay faithful in our purpose, and faithful in our, uh, in our walk with you. We bless you now, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless you. I want to talk to you again about the crisis of belief, the crisis of belief. We go to church, or we attend online, we, we read our Bible, we, we, we pray, we, 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 we recite some verses every now and then. We have this relationship with God, but after a while, for some, it becomes lethargic. It becomes lethargic, and we, we almost resign to the fact that any profound transformation that we are looking for, uh, it won't really happen or we won't really see it until we get to heaven. In other words, we, we stop believing that there could be miracles. We stop believing that there could be great things that transpire. We stop believing. We read it and we know it and we hear messages and we hear sermons, but to actually believe that we're going to see a great move of God in the time that we live, we've almost become apathetic to. Mark chapter number 9, beginning at verse number 14, and I'm reading from the NIV version for those of you that are on electronic Bibles and can switch. The Bible says this, he says, when they came to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd around them, and the teachers of the law arguing with them. As soon as all the people saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with wonder and ran to greet him. What are you arguing with them about, he asked. A man in the crowd answered, Teacher, I brought you my son, who was possessed by a spirit that has robbed him of speech. Whenever it seizes him, it throws him to the ground, he foams at the mouth 
gnashes his teeth and becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. O unbelieving generation, Jesus replied, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought him. When the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into a convulsion. He fell to the ground and rolled around, foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered. It has often thrown him into fire or water to kill him, but if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. If you can, Jesus said, everything is possible for him who believes. Immediately the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. When Jesus saw that a crowd was running to the scene, he rebuked the evil spirit. You deaf and mute spirit, he said, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. The spirit shrieked, convulsed him violently, and came out. The boy looked so much like a corpse that many said, he is dead. Sam Harris, and a lot of people don't want to quote Sam Harris because Sam Harris is known for uh, not believing in what we believe. But Sam Harris said, a belief is a lever that once pulled most almost everything else in a person's life. A belief is a lever that once pulled moves almost everything else in a person's life. Once you pull on belief, once you pull on your faith, it has the capacity to shift things in your life. It has the capacity to shift your disposition. It has the capacity to shift your circumstance. Because your beliefs, what you believe defines your vision of the world. What you believe defines your, your world view. It defines how you see things, how you view things, how you take things in, and how you process. What you believe determines your emotional responses. You, you, you don't respond uh, the same way as others that, that don't believe. Even in death, the Bible tells you that we don't grieve as those that have no hope because your, what you believe determines how you respond. What you believe determines how you, 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 you transition through and matriculate through the different uh, uh, things that God allows to happen in your life. So, uh, you, you, you can read the Bible, you can read it from Genesis to Revelations, but the Bible is just words until you actually believe. The Bible is just a text until you actually believe. Once you begin to believe what you are reading, then they become, that, that belief becomes a, a, a functioning apparatus of your mind. In other words, your mind filters life through that belief system. And it determines what you desire, it determines your fears, it determines your expectations, and it determines how you behave. But if you are not really believing what you are reading, then they're just words on a page and you'll start grasping on to other things to try to help you cope and to help you focus. To try to help you get through the things that, that life inevitably brings us all. Life inevitably brings us all problems. Life inevitably brings us all sorrow. Life inevitably brings sickness across our front door. 
What we believe determines how we handle what life is going to bring. So here we go. We have this father. We have this father who, who brings his son. We have this father who brings his son. And the crisis is he's brought his son and he has expectations. He's brought his son. He has expectations that his son can be healed because of what he has heard. Because of what he has heard about Jesus. Because of what he has heard about what Jesus can do. Because of what he has heard about how Jesus can, can heal and all the miracles that Jesus can do. He, he comes and he brings him to, to Jesus. Well, actually... He brings him to the church. He brings him to the church, but in his mind, that's the same as bringing him to Jesus. Because notice, when Jesus walks up, he says, what's the problem? What, what, what's the problem? What's all the commotion about? The man responds, I brought my son to you, but your disciples couldn't heal him. In other words, there is an expectation that the man has of those who claim to believe. You claim to be a follower, you claim to be a disciple, you claim to know him. There is an expectation that the man has of those that claim to believe. So here's the question. Does the world have a right to have expectation of us who claim we believe what the word of God says. We claim we believe that God is who he says he is. We claim we believe that God can do what he says he can do. We claim we believe in the promises of God. But does that translate into what? Into the expectations that people have of us. The man doesn't have the capacity or the belief to lay hands on his son himself. He does not have the faith to pray or cast out the spirit himself. But he says, I'm going to take my son where I know he can get some help. I'm taking him to those that say, I believe. And now, because... They couldn't do it. The man's mindset is messed up. How many of you have had expectations that have not been met and it has messed up your faith? How many of you have had expectations that God would move in a certain area didn't come out how you wanted it, and it has messed up your faith. How many of you have asked God for answers and you haven't gotten the answer, and it has messed up your faith? We have belief in crisis because we have wounded expectations. We have expectations that have been wounded because things have not always come out the way and transpired the way that we wanted them to. So we have a crisis of belief and, and, and we live with these wounded expectations. Because your ability to believe is impacted greatly by your life experiences. What you have experienced affects what you believe. That's why in Revelations, John sees a group of people in white robes. And he wonders, who are these? And he says, these are they that overcame by the blood of the Lamb, watch this, and by the word of their testimony. 
we, our faith and our capacity to overcome is not just the cross. But it is our capacity to believe which is tied to us sharing our experiences of God's victory in our lives. They overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. I wonder why many were struggling during this time that we have not been able to come together, that we have not been able to be in person. But I thought to myself, it's because we have not been able to share experiences. Being locked up with just my own experiences, being locked up with just my own day-to-day -day issues, being locked up with just my own day-to-day -day turmoil. I don't see anything different. I need to hear some testimonies because my ability to believe is impacted by life experiences. You, you, you can't change your faith into what makes you comfortable. I want to say this, don't, don't start letting your faith change into what makes you comfortable. What do you mean? In other words, don't let your faith change to ma match your circumstance. Go to Daniel chapter number 3. Go to Daniel chapter number 3, beginning at verse number 13. Stop rationalizing your faith and your circumstance to make yourself okay when God doesn't give you what you want. Stop rationalizing to make yourself okay. There is a reason God has not answered in the favor in which you requested. But because he does not do it, does not change my belief in his capacity to do it. Daniel chapter number 3, beginning at verse number 13, the Bible says, Furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before the king, and Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold I have set up? Now when you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipes, and all of the kinds of music, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship, if you will be thrown immediately, uh, if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves for you in this matter. I don't need to defend to you what I believe. I don't need to defend to you why I believe what I believe. I don't need to defend to you why my faith is in my God. He says, if we are thrown into the blazing furnace, that God, the God we serve is what? able to save us from it. That's what I believe. Or he will rescue us from your hand. That's what I believe. But if he does not, here's the key. Remember I said you cannot change your faith to make it comfortable. You can't change your faith. Your faith has to remain constant regardless of what, the, what transpires. He says, but if not, then we will not serve your gods or worship. He says, if he doesn't, we want you to know one thing. It doesn't change what we believe. We will not serve your God because God did not answer this prayer. See, I don't change my belief based on what God answers or doesn't answer. Either I believe he's God or I don't. Either I believe he can or I don't. Either I believe he's able or I don't. The crisis of belief is that when God does it, I let my, I, my belief systems begin to change. So I start to look for a belief system that fits 
my circumstance. I start to look for a belief system that fits where I want to go. I start to look because God didn't come through. But you, you cannot change your faith to be comfortable. Can't change your faith. You have to be able to say, if he does, if he doesn't, I know he can. If he does, or if he doesn't, I know he can. If he does, or if he doesn't, I know he can. So you got to get that in your spirit. If he does, or if he doesn't, I know you can. I know he can. So, so, so this, this, this father, he says, he says, if you can, God. If you can, we're going to get back to that. You have to know the God that you serve. If you're going to, to, have a, to divert this crisis of belief, you're going to have to know the God that you serve. Go to Matthew chapter number 8. You have to know the God that you serve. The Father said, God, if you can heal my son. Watch this, Matthew chapter number 8, verse number 1. When he came from the mountainside, large crowds followed him. A man with leprosy came and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. Immediately he was cured of his leprosy. See, there is a difference between the father and the leopard in the placement of the word if. The father says, if you can. His if you can says, if you have the ability. The leper says, if you will. If you will is saying, if it is in your desire. Oh my God, you got to understand this thing. If you can is different than if you will. The father put the if on his power. The leper was confident about God's power, but put the if on his will. So the question is never of God's power. 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 says this. This is the confidence that we have approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his what? His will, he hears us. The crisis of belief stems from experiences where we have been often disappointed. But sometimes we are, not dis we, are, we are never disappointed because of the lack of God's capacity. If you can, it's never the cause of our disappointment. Let that sit with you. If God can, is never the cause of, God, of our disappointment. We are confident that if we ask anything according to the will, the mind of God, the will of God, he hears us. He hears us. You have to know how God operates before you start going, before you start making requests, before you start praying, before you start. You have to know the will of God. What is the will of God? We sing songs. God will is what I want for my life. We sing all these songs talking about we want God's will, but do we want God's will or do we want our way? Do we really want God's will? Do we really want God's will? Hmm. God's will caused the Hebrew boys to be thrown in a blazing fire. Do we want God's will? God's will caused Daniel to be thrown into a lion's den. God's will. God's will caused <laughs> David to be hunted by Saul, having to hide in a cave and act like a madman just to survive. God's will caused John to be beheaded. God's will caused Jesus 
to have to go and die on the cross. God's will. Do we want God's will or do we want our way? Because God's will sometimes is painful for us. God's will sometimes is uncomfortable for us. God's will sometimes will bring tears for us. God's will sometimes will bring sorrow for us. So do we really want God's will or do we want our way? But if we pray, if we find out and we know God, if we know his will, we have to know God. And then not only do we have to know God, we have to be honest and know ourselves. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Are you a faith, the faithful reader of the word of God? Who are you? Are you the faithful prayer warrior? Who are you? Are you the Christmas Easter saint? Who are you? Are you the Sunday morning only? Who are you? Are you the same no matter where? Who are you? You have to know yourself. You have to be brutally honest with yourself. We, we, we all have times where our faith is, 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 has ambiguity. We all have times where our faith, we question, but who are you really at your core? The Father, when Jesus questions him, questioning his ability, Jesus said, if I can, if you can. What do you mean, if you can? He says, I do believe. He confesses. He, comes, he confronts who he is. He confronts what's going on in his mind. He confronts his confusion. He says, I do believe, but help my unbelief. Uh, I believe, but because of what I've experienced, I, I, I heard the word, I believe, but, but my experience has wounded my faith. I don't know. I feel, I feel like I'm touching somebody. Out. My experiences have wounded my faith. I do believe. What and where are you in your faith? Who you really are. What life is really about. What you really believe. Because he says, I believe, but help my unbelief. You know I believe because I brought him in the first place. But now I brought him and nothing happened. My faith is getting, oh my God, I feel something in this place. I, I brought him to the disciples, I believe, but they couldn't do what I expected my faith is wounded. I brought him to you, Jesus, but your disciples couldn't have. I, I, I brought him, I, I believe, but help my unbelief. I wonder who today has taken it to God. And God, I believe, if I didn't believe, I wouldn't have brought it to you in the first place. But the response that I've been getting, Father, it's shaking me a little bit. Father, the response that I've been getting, it's, it's wounded me a little bit. My mind, my, my thoughts, my faith. Don't, you, 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 ought, you ought not even be ashamed to admit it. Some of you may be sitting right where you are crying because you know that I'm talking to you. God, I brought it to you first. I brought it to you, I brought it to you, and I brought it to you. And Father, because I don't understand why I'm not getting the answer, I don't understand why you're not moving, I don't understand why it's not happening. I thought, I thought that it was going to change, it was going to turn out a different way. And God, it's, it's shaking me. It's shaking me. Edith Hamilton said, faith is not belief. Belief is passive. Faith is active. Belief waits for something. Faith acts. It's more than, your belief is more than just you knowing facts. It's more than just being able to quote some scriptures. Ha! Ah. It's more than, 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 than just knowing what the word says. It's more than knowing 
that there is a God. It's more than knowing that Jesus is alive. It's more than knowing. My question to you is how did what you know affect your life today? Belief is passive. Faith is active. How did what you know affect how you live today? How did what you know affect how you behave today? How did what you know affect how you matriculated through your circumstance? How does what you know affect how you handle what God has allowed to come across your plate, across your front door? How does what you know affect what you do? Belief is passive. Faith is active. When you have faith, what you know affects your behavior. That's why Mark 16, 16 says, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be condemned. And he that doesn't believe will be condemned because the faith and real faith causes an action. It causes you to do something. He that believeth and is baptized. He's whose faith makes him move. The person whose faith makes him, makes him have a behavior. The person whose faith makes them have an action. That's why James said faith without works is dead. I wonder what your faith has made you do about your circumstance today. Your faith has to move you. You've been trying to get your faith to move God, but your faith has to move you. Your faith has to cause you to make some changes. Your faith has to cause you to go in a different direction. Your faith has to cause you to move. John, chapter number 10. Say, John, chapter number 10, your faith has to move you. Verse number nine, the Bible says, I am, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that you must ha might have life and that you might have it in full. So my question is, how full was your life today because of your faith? How fulfilling was your life today? No, I didn't ask you if your circumstance changed. I didn't ask you if your healing came. I didn't ask you if, if, if everything came out roses. But did your faith help you to live today? Did your faith help you to have abundant life today? Did your faith help you? Because listen, listen, listen. Yes, Lord. Listen, when your faith is active, it controls what you do in the midst of where you are. And so when you have faith and even in the midst of the worst circumstance, you behave, your life is full and abundant. How do I know? How do I know? I know, I know, I know, I know because, because Paul and Silas and Acts were sitting, the Bible says, in the inner part of the prison. And the Bible says at midnight they began to sing and they began to worship. They began to sing and the doors flew open. What am I saying to you? I'm saying to you that faith causes you to do something. Their faith calls them even in the midst of horrific circumstance to begin to sing and begin to praise. Why? Because their circumstance were horrible, but their God was still the same. Their circumstance was horrible, but God was still faithful. Their circumstance was horrible, but God was still able. Their circumstance was horrible, but God could still make a way. Their circumstance was horrible, but God could still open the doors. Their circumstance was horrible. And I want to tell you today, you might not be where you want to be. Your circumstance might not be what you want it to be. Life throws us all limits, but at the end of the day, what does your faith cause you to do? Does your faith cause you to still open your mouth and say, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth? Does your faith cause you to open your mouth and still say, in spite of what the doctor's report says, I can still do all things through Christ that strengthens me? Well, faith should cause you to act a certain way. Faith moves me. When my circumstances seems unmovable, faith causes me to act when my circumstance says I'm going to die. 
You have to expect more. You have to expect more. You have to expect more now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that I can think or ask. The great Jeopardy host, Alex Trebek, and I'm, I'm, I'm closing. Oh, God. Alex Trebek said this. He said, don't tell me what you believe in. I'll observe how you behave, and I will make my own determination. Unquote. Don't tell me you believe God. I'll look at what you do, and I'll make my own determination. Don't tell me you're trusting God. I'll look at what you do, and I'll make my own determination. Don't tell me you have expectations that God's going to show. I'll look at what you do, and I'll make my own determination. Because your faith should cause a certain reaction. Your faith should cause you to move differently, act differently, talk differently walk differently. So stop telling me how much you believe God. Stop telling me how much you trust God and start showing me by how you live. Start showing me by what's coming out, by, by, the, by the talk that you have. Start showing me that you believe God. My brothers and sisters, now is not the time for your faith to fail. Now is not the time for your faith to go left and right. But now is the time for you to allow God to be God. And for you to do your part and let your works show what you believe. Father, we thank you today. I thank you for this word that you have sent, Lord God. You have stirred up something on today. Ah, You've stirred up something in our minds and in our hearts and in our spirits. And Father, I pray for my brother and my sister that is watching on today. Father, start working on them. Father, help them to understand that they have to start being honest with where they are so that they can move forward to where you want them to be. Father, help us to start seeking your will and not our way. Help us to start seeking what you desire for us and truly mean when we say your will is what we want for our lives. Father, be a prayer answering God. Be that wheel in the middle of the wheel. Be Lord God, that angel and that son of man walking in the fire. Father, send deliverance, send hope, send peace, send joy. Build our faith. Help us, Father, even during this time to be able, Lord God, to, 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 to share with each other somehow, some way. Let's find a way to share with each other so we can overcome by each other's testimony. For the one that feels isolated and alone, Father, I pray that you would send them words of comfort. Send somebody to speak life to them. For the one that feels, Lord God, that, they, they, that they're ready to throw in the towel, Lord God, send them somebody. Let them speak hope. Let this word today be so deeply embedded in us that the enemy cannot steal it from our spirits. I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, my brother and sister, today your faith can lead you to God. Today your faith can lead you to him. And we want to pray the prayer of salvation with you. We want to pray a prayer of salvation. We want to, to welcome you. And if you want to receive Jesus on today, I want you to call the number on the screen and we want to pray with you. And we want to help you and we want to, to, to give you an opportunity to, to, 
to, to come into the body to, for your faith. He that believeth in his baptized, for your belief to move into action today. Call that number right now. Somebody is waiting. If it's busy, leave a message. We'll call you back. We would desire to help you walk with God. God bless you all tonight, my brothers and sisters. And I'll see you back here on Sunday as we continue lifting up the name of the Jesus. But until then, let your faith move you.